What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to Fireside Rangers. I'm your host, Eric Wilson. Today, joined by my co-host, Colin Alcaves. And today, we're going to be to be discussing, once again, the Rangers' perfect Western Conference road trip that just wrapped up. The Rangers are back at home tonight against Carolina, but they're coming off of a five-game win streak where they went perfect across a lot of a lot of good teams over there in the West Coast. So we're going to get down into that. Before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, ring that bell so you don't miss a notification. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, be sure to leave us a five-star review and be sure to follow all of our social media accounts at Fireside Rangers on both Instagram and X. But before we really get into it, Colin, my friend, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm bummed. I, uh, I missed yesterday's episode, but I'm excited to be back today. Back in action, ready to watch the Rangers take on the Hurricane tonight. Of course, it's going to be a good game, but I'm sure we'll be covering that throughout the game on all of our social media, so be sure to check those out during the game as well. But before we really move on to the future and tonight, let's really break down what we just witnessed. The Rangers on a five-game winning streak, and every single one of those wins came on the road. It's the first time in franchise history that the Rangers perfected a road trip of at least five games or more, so it's pretty historic there. But I think the first thing that I want to talk about that we learned from this road trip is the fact that the Rangers are going to have another season of incredible play on the road. Um, last season, the Rangers actually did finish the year with a better away record than they did at home. Their home record was 23-13-5, and so a very good record there, but slightly better on the road with 24-9-8. and um, This is only the Rangers' third home game of the season, which they're 1-1 one one at home so far. But on the road, they are six and one. So, you know, we don't have a big enough sample size just yet to compare the two. But all we can say so far is that the Rangers are absolutely cooking on the road. So, Colin, just break it down for me. Your thoughts on the Rangers, the difference between playing at home and away. Like what what makes the Rangers so much better on the road? I wish I could tell you, honestly, I think that they're just playing like their lives are on the line constantly. And it's different than years of Rangers past where, We've kind of seen them take their foot off the gas at times, uh, especially like before the helmet throw last season. There was, they dropped a couple of games in a row. Uh, I feel like whether they're home or away this year so far, they've looked good. Um, but being able to play on the road and being able to play well on the road is a great, great stat because playing in other teams' home stadiums is so much more difficult, typically speaking. But when you play in MSG, you have that, that extra uh, player in the fans and it's easy to rally behind that crowd. Um, so if they're able to do it without us, I think it's going to be huge for their standings down the line when they when they get a bunch of games at home and when they're back at uh, in a, on a homestand, for them to be able to string together some more points because, uh, like I said before, winning on the road, it, home, home ice advantage is such a big factor in the NHL. Mm -hmm. And you, you look at the road trip, and I think, at least from the way that I interpreted it, um, the beginning of it, we started off really, really strong. And although we didn't lose, I feel like the Rangers did look, start to look a little like less elite towards the end of it. You know, the last two games, um, two most recent ones, we got brought to overtime by Vancouver and Winnipeg. Now, do you think that that's due to the fact that the Rangers have been on the road for so long and it was really starting to get to them? Or did we just not have good games or was Vancouver and Winnipeg just that good? Uh, I think part of it is just fatigue. Uh, when you're away from home for that long, it can be difficult. I know that some of the longer stretches and also the time changes, things like that, playing it at a, what feels like a later time, but really is the normal time there, uh, can play a big role. Um, but they're also good teams. I mean, any any team can beat you on any given night. So I'm not going to, uh, you know, say that we, they're going to start struggling on the road just because they played, they struggled a little bit towards the end of the trip. That's a given. You're not going to win every single game. That's just the way the NHL goes. Um, and not to mention, Connor Hellebuck is a world-class goalie, stands on his head, and I feel like he's constantly in a duel with Shesterkin every time we play them. Uh, I don't think we I've seen him play bad against us in a while. And Thatcher Demko isn't a slouch either. I believe he started against us, or was it um, Spencer Martin? I, I'm not too sure. I missed that game because I was in Nashville. But from the clips that I saw, it looked like he also played pretty well. So, you know, I, I'm not going to um, – raise any alarm flags or get the bells going because uh, there was a little bit of a struggle down at the end. I think you can just credit that to uh, fatigue. And I think now that they're returning home and uh, they have the, the fans behind them, they'll, they'll be rejuvenated again and ready to go. Yeah. And, you know, we complain a lot about the NHL scheduling, but the one thing they did do right is after five games on the road, changing time zones, city to city, the Rangers did have like three days of rest. You know, today's Thursday. The last time they played was Monday. 
So hopefully the Rangers are once again acclimated to Eastern Standard Time, ready to play a game at a normal time of the night <laughs> for them. But shout out the NHL schedulers for, for that because – Thank you. I, I did not want to see us go right back into another game or like Tuesday night or something like that. But yeah, it would have been difficult. That is the first thing that we learned from this road trip is that the Rangers will perform on the road just as good as they can at home. The second thing that I want to get into is a one individual player. Um, we've talked about him a lot recently on this channel, but how can you not when he's playing as good as he is? Artemi Panarin. Um He's looking like he's having the best season of his career. He scored in every single game this season. He's on a nine-game point streak, looking to make it 10 tonight. But if you look specifically at this five-game stretch on the road, Panarin had 10 of his 15 points during those five games. So especially on the road, Panarin was cooking. His best game was the most recent game against Winnipeg. He had a goal and two assists. So just Colin... You know, we sound like broken record machines the amount of times we talk about Panarin, but specifically from this road trip, just how did he look? And if there was any one performance from it that really stood out to you the most, which one was it? Uh, how does he look? I, If I had one word to describe it, it's confident. And that's the one thing that he kind of has lacked the past few seasons. I think he looks like a completely different player. I think he's carrying the puck with a lot more poise, not getting too cute with it. The turnovers are down, the shots are up, and – I mean, with a guy like that, he's got a wicked wrister, and all it takes is putting the puck on net, and you do it enough times, and eventually, I mean, you pepper goalies, they're going to start to let him in. And not only that, though, he's also driving the net. I got to say his best performance uh, in the last five, uh, he was fantastic in all of them, was clearly that Winnipeg goal. I mean, he's he's developed himself as a world-class passer, and he he finds the lanes that nobody else can find, and we, we saw that on the two assists. But um, driving the net – and putting and having his stick down, being in the right area, and having the soft hands to deflect that slap pass from Jacob Truba into the net to tie the game. That's that's huge. I mean, that's that's big for the Rangers, and they need to play like that across the, the board. But it's good to see your superstars even getting down into the uh, the lower areas and fighting and and uh, and not being scared to get to the nitty gritty uh, front of the net. So I think that's a key part in why he succeeded so far this season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's been playing great. You know, it's who who knew that Panarin had all these other aspects to his game that weren't just recording assists? Because I know I sure didn't, but I'm more than happy to see him bringing it out. And, you know, Panarin, I I believe now his 15 points is third most in the NHL because the Rangers haven't played in a few days. It used to be second, only behind Jack Hughes. I believe it's third now, but I don't know who overtook him. Um, but you look, just look at it, 15 points in nine games played, looking to extend his point streak to 10 tonight. Where do you see Panarin finishing the season? Do you think he's going to hit that 100-point mark? Do you think he's like possibly going to be in the running for maybe a heart trophy by how he's been playing? I mean, it depends. This is the best start he's gotten off to so far. And with the worst start, he almost finished with a heart. Um, I think it's entirely possible. It's incredibly early to try and be predicting that. And, you know, barring injury and things like that, I think he has the potential to go on a crazy run. I almost guarantee that he breaks that 100-point mark, again, barring some crazy circumstance or some huge drop-off by the entire team. Um, but I just don't, don't see that happening. I think he finally cracks that 100-point plateau and sets career best across the board. Um, just with the way that he's shooting, I think that you can, you can almost guarantee he's going to have more goals than he's ever had. And the passing, I mean, there's tons of finishers on this team. He's just got to get it to them. So, you know, I, I, I think it's almost a foregone conclusion that if he can keep up and maintain this level, or even if he takes just a slight step back and plays at the level that we're used to seeing, you know, he's he, he consistently puts up 90-plus points. I want to say 95-plus points. So, you know, for him to get off to the start like this, which is the best start that we've seen in, in his career, in my opinion, uh, I think it's extremely promising for him and, uh, and setting all the, the career totals that he wants to. I hope so. He's come very close to the 100-point mark a couple of times. Um, I think he's, he's had a 90-plus point season every single year besides that one shortened COVID year, which we're not going to blame him for that. But even that season, he played over a point per game. So hopefully this is the year that he finally does it. It's looking like he might. It's looking like his best season. But as we move into the third thing that we learned from this road trip, um, it's not going to be a good one. You know, the Rangers did go 5-0. and We can sit here talking about how good Panarin looked for 15 minutes, but like we've got to be realistic. And not all of those games were pretty. You know, like we mentioned earlier, two of them went to overtime. Some were a lot closer than we wanted to. And I think the one thing that we learned that I want to bring up in this episode is that the even strength goal scoring is still not fixed. 
It was a huge problem last year where the Rangers weren't scoring at 5v5. And to begin this season, we were hopeful that it would look a little better. And it has looked a little better. But it's not where the Rangers want it to be just yet. Um, have a stat right here. The Rangers have scored 28 goals through nine games so far this season. But only 16 of them have come at even strength. So the Rangers are relying on that power play a lot. And it's great because the power play is succeeding and we're still winning games. But at some point, the Rangers are going to cool down. You know, that power play isn't going to stay close to perfect forever. And the Rangers need to start finding a way to score 5v5. So, Colin, in your opinion, how can the Rangers start to produce more offense when it's even strength? Who needs to step up? Who needs to keep doing what they're doing? And in what ways can they make it happen? I don't think it's any one person that needs to step up. I think it's just the team as a whole needs to play more as a cohesive unit, similar to how that power play does. I think, like I said uh, in episodes past and like we've been mentioning, um, there's new lines for the first time in, what, two, three years? And everybody's still finding their footing. There's a new system in place. Lavulette's, you know, still getting everybody to gel. And we're doing well so far. I mean, it's almost an even split. Obviously, you'd like to see um, more even strength goals. What was it, 16? Um, yeah, and the, I mean, 16 so was it, of 28. Yeah. Yeah. So then 12, 12 or, or uh, power play. So, you know. Mm. And, and penalty kill as well. Yeah. Like, but you, sure. you, You'd like to see more from the five on five. I definitely leaves a little bit to be desired, especially because coming into this, you know, Laviolette's uh, stats with the Capitals last year, and their five on play, five on five play was uh, a lot better than ours. So, you know, obviously it's going to take some time. There's not not going to be like instantly overnight that 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 solution gets fixed. Um, but you just need contributions from up and down the lineup. You need everybody playing their role and playing it to the um, the need of the line. So, like Kreider. He's a net front presence. He's a power forward. You need him to get in front of the net. You need him to be strong with the puck. He's a Benajad. You need him to slow it down, you know, look around. And you need Kako to just also be strong with the puck and, and shots on net. I think we're still a little too cute with it, a little too many passes, trying to find that perfect play. I think we just got to get more shots like Panarin is doing, and that's why he's succeeding. And I think everybody should take uh, some notes and just start ripping pucks on net because, you know, not every mm -hmm. goal scoring chance is going to be a high quality chance, but it doesn't mean it can't go in. I've seen a bunch of dud goals that happen. Even the best of the best can get beat on some bad shots sometimes. And sometimes you just need that puck luck. Um, so no shot is a bad shot as long as you know you're hitting the net. Um, so I think that's that's a big part of it. And I think they just need some time to uh, to continue to gel, buy into that system, figure out their roles, and play as as a cohesive unit. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that you brought up Peter Laviolette because that was going to be one of my next points that I wanted to bring up was um, Laviolette has a very defense first type of system for the going for the Rangers right now. And I don't have the quote pulled up, but I know recently in some media um, like interview, both Laviolette and Chris Kreider agreed that um, they don't want to like they know that they need to improve their 5v5 play but they don't want to take away from their defense first type system and harm the defense when aiming to improve that five V five play. So do you think that's like, like a big part of the reason where like you're willing to just kind of have a little bit less five V five goals because in the end, we're going to have a lot better of a defensive team that doesn't need to score as many goals to win games. Is that like, does that seem like a fair rationale to you or are they just making excuses? I mean, I don't think it's a bad rationale. If you look at the team, if it ain't broke, don't fix it so far. It's been working. Um, obviously, you know, you play a little bit more of a, a structured team, a little bit more disciplined. Um, you're going to need the five and five to step up there. But if a 50 50 split right now is tough, but it's such a small sample size. Um, as the season progresses, I'm sure you're going to see better plays uh, at five on five and, and the goals will start coming. But for now, I just focus on the defense because you're winning games with good defense and the goals are coming some way, some shape, you know, somehow they're finding the back of the net, whether that be in overtime or off a lucky bounce off a defenseman skate, like that Gustafson goal earlier in the season, like whatever it takes, it's finding a way in the net and we're winning games. So I, I obviously I'd like to see them improve, but at the cost of defense, I don't know if it's worth the risk of potentially having goals scored against us to have the chance to score more five on five goals. I'd say that the system that they have now is doing well. Obviously if you could tweak it a little bit without sacrificing any defense, that would be ideal. Um, but if you're talking about sacrificing defense for offense, uh, me as a defensive minded player and fan, um, I'm always going to say defense first. Don't don't uh, don't force any plays and try to make anything happen because it'll come back to bite you on an odd man rush and things like that. 
No, that's a fair analysis of the situation. I guess we'll have to see tonight against Carolina how the defense plays and how many goals the Rangers can score 5v5. We aren't live streaming tonight to be covering the game, but we will be covering the entire game on all of our social medias. So be sure to check that out and leave a follow on at Fireside Rangers on both X and Instagram. But I guess that pretty much wraps things up. Me and Colin got to get ready to watch tonight's game against Carolina. And we'll be back tomorrow to talk about the game and hopefully – a post win recap but if not we'll still be here for the opposite i don't want to say the word because i almost jinxed the rangers last game <laughs> but that about wraps up this episode um thank you all for watching be sure to like subscribe ring that bell so you don't miss a notification and leave your thoughts on the rangers road trip down in the comment section below and if you're watching us on either apple or spotify be sure to give us a five star review but thank you for watching have a good one have and let's go rangers, rangers.